Hello, everyone. This is the presentation for the paper, AUC-oriented graph neural network for fraud detection. My name is Huang Mengda, and other authors are Liu Yang, Ao Xiang, Li Kuan, He Qing from Institute of Computing Technology, Chinese Academy of Science, Shi Jianfeng, Feng Jinghua, Yang Hao from Alibaba Group. Today, I will wrap our presentation will be carried out in order of background, method, experiments, and conclusion. Fraud detection tasks become easier when discrete entities are built as graphs. Benefited by the capacity of mining profound dependence and correlations between entities, graph neural networks have been broadly implemented in fraud detection tasks. In particular, due to its message passing scheme, which aggregates and transforms the representation of neighbors for each node recursively, GNN is competent to discover subtle and hidden signals over graphs and categorize some ambiguous cases. Despite achieving remarkable success on fraud detection tasks, GNN based models for fraud detection yet suffer from the imbalanced label distribution problem. Namely, the fraudsters are far less than benign users. Under such an adverse condition, models are prone to overfitting in the majority class. A model like this tends to classify all nodes as benign nodes while yielding high performance on accuracy. Unlike preceding literatures, we attempt to solve this challenge by finding a metric unbiased to label distribution and maximizing it explicitly. AUC is such a mat metric. Randomly draw a benign node and a fraud node from all nodes from the perspective of probability. AUC denotes the probability that the fraud node is more likely to be classified as a fraud node than the benign node. Due to the symmetry of the expression, AUC can reflect the classification ability of each class in a balanced way. So now we have a question, how to maximize AUC over a GNN? In recent years, Stochastic AUC maximization draw much attention in the literature. To maximize AUC, the most straightforward idea is designing a loss function derived from the unbiased estimation of AUC. As the indicator function in the second formula, this one, is not consistent and cannot generate gradient, we replace it as is L2 convex surrogate. For this surrogate, inspired by recent progress in utilizing AUC maximization in deep neural networks, we transform the problem of minimizing L2 surrogates to a new minimax problem. This problem can be solved by saddle point searching algorithm. This transformation is too complicated to explain, so please reading our paper for this proof. The advantage of this transformation is that in the original minimizing problem, the upper one, we need to calculate the value by traversing all node pairs, V and V prime, to calculate its value by all node pairs with different labels. This is unfriendly to mini batch. While in the new problem, we can calculate its value by only traversing each node. Thus, we can utilize stochastic gradient. Now, we can find the parameters of a GNN that maximize AUC. So do we maximize AUC over the graph? The answer is no. After getting a GNN well-trained by stochastic AUC maximization, we find that for some nodes, 
randomly deletes some of its neighbors will change the predictive results of this node. This is not an accidental phenomenon. We can find this problem on many nodes. AUC is not maximized by only optimizing GNS parameters. So why does this happen? We observe that in reality, many fraud nodes may interact with benign nodes deliberately to be looked like a benign node. Such behaviors reflected in the graph is the topological pollution. From the mathematical perspective, this challenge is also well understood. Traditional AOC maximization only maximized the parameters, only maximized GNN, uh, only maximized AUC over the parameter space, but ignores the optimization of topological space. Therefore, AUC maximization over GNN need two essential factors a good parameter and a good topological cleaner. However, it is rather difficult to optimize both parameter space and topological space at once because training them needs di distinct materials. The parameter searching should be trained with nodes in graph and their labels, while the, each pruner have no supervised information to train. To solve this problem, we decide to train the classifier and the pruner asynchronized by decoupled optimization, which transformed the original problem into two sub problems, which is the line four and the line five in this algorithm. It is parameter searching and policy searching. We have introduced how we solve the problem in line four by stochastic AUC maximization. Now we are focusing on how we solve the problem in line five. We, re we, we regard the each pruning process as a Markov decision process rewarded by AUC variation. Applying such reward makes any model maximize reward in this MDP, also maximize AUC. We can solve this MDP by using deep reinforcement learning. Importing reinforcement learning into our framework is very natural and possible. For not only does reinforcement learning require no noise related supervised data, but also keeps a consistent optimizing target this is the overview of our model. We have two separated models to optimize parameter space and topological space. In our model, we have a classifier in the left. We trained with a pruned graph to output predictive results. And we have an each pruner to clean the topology. For the each pruner, we choose a GNN to obtain better state representation vectors. This architecture forms a positive loop between the classifier and the pruner. The well-trained classifier provides more precise reward to the pruner. And the well-trained pruner provides cleaner topological structure to the classifier. But implementing RL over a graph is time consuming. For saving time, we devised three mechanisms to accelerate the RL process. Among them, the most powerful one is the surrogate reward. When simulating trajectories, we only need the variation of AUC. The surrogate reward returns it directly in ON time instead of use, using ON log N time to compute to AUCs. So now we're talking about our experiments. We choose three public datasets for the experiments. YAPJ is a graph with nodes denote reviews and the nodes are connected if they are posted by the same user or posted in the same time 
or posted with similar ratings. Amazon is a graph with nodes denote users, and the nodes are connected if they have common reviewing product or have identical ratings or very similar in TF, IDF. Books is a very imbalanced data set with items connected by co-purchasing. So here we have two research questions. In order to answer RQ1, does AOGNN outperform SOTA GNN based fraud detection models? And RQ2, how significant are the classifier parameter searching and the age pruning policy searching in boosting AUC? We perform wildly experiments and ablation tests on three data sets. As the comparison, Result showing that our, our method outperforms all baselines, not only in AUC, but in F1 and uh, G mean. In ablation study, we can observe that the topology optimizing in AOGNN does promote AUC performance compared to optimizing via only parameters. To answer RQ3, we display uh, how does AUC evolved in parameter searching? We display how AUC evolves in all data sets per 100 iterations. In this figure, after each falling, the AUC curves gain a long, longer lasting growth and higher upper bound. Therefore, AUC is not falling into any local optima. To answer RQ4, what kind of ages are easier to be pruned? We listed each pruning related statistics when applying our well-trained policy. From the histogram, we can discover that RUR ages are hardly pruned. The reason is that reviews connected by RUR are posted by identical users and ha have the same labels. Such ages are informative account for, but on, only account for a, a small proportion. But our pruning policy is effective to keep almost all such ages. In order to answer RQ5, how effective are RL accelerating mechanisms? We conduct the RL accelerating mechanism study. We have two observations from the following figures. Firstly, surrogate loss, a surrogate reward accelerates the trajectory, trajectory simulating for 25 to 30 times. Secondly, pruning 10 ages per node achieves best AUC improvement. So here is the conclusions. We propose a novel GNN based model for fraud detection from the standpoint of AUC maximization, we formulate neighbors choosing, we formulate neighbors choosing as an MDP with a theoretical guarantee of maximizing AUC and solve it by deep RL. Experiments on three public data sets demonstrate that AOGNN clearly outperforms the SOTA baselines. So, that's all for our presentation. Thank you for listening and uh, feel free to answer, uh, to request to raise your questions. Thank you. Hello, yes, thank you for that very, very interesting presentation. So as you said, we have a few minutes for questions. So please just shout and, and, and ask a question if you have one, otherwise you can type it into the chat as before. Um, as I don't see any questions yet. I actually have a, I can ask the first question, give others some time to think. So it's clear that your method, you know, leads to really good performance um, for fraud detection. And you, you showed that, you know, this AUC oriented approach also results in, you know, higher performance in terms of other metrics like the F1 score. 
I'm just wondering how effective would such a approach be for, you know, all our applications. So not necessarily fraud detection and not necessarily applications where there's a, such a strong class imbalance. Yeah, um, only maximizing AUC is very helpful for any imbalance that is data set, not only for graph, but all other data sets. So um, for, other uh, for other applications, um, I think maybe they don't have the um, topological pollution. So our RL module is not helpful. And um, all in all, I think AU AUC orient oriented GNN is how um, is very, uh, can perform better in any imbalanced data set, not only for fraud detection. I see that that, that makes that makes sense to me. Are there are there any other questions? Um, I'll ask this one one more quick one because I, I think it's really interesting. Um, do you know if there's a, a a point where the label imbalance stops being important? So, you know, if it's you know say. 60% one class, 40% another, will such an approach like this still have such strong performance boosts? Um, well, uh, we don't have such experiments. So um, I guess it may not be as helpful as very imbalanced data set. Like in our experiments, um, the fraud is only account for like 10% um, to uh, point zero, um, point zero percent. So that's very imbalanced. So AUC oriented learning is um, very helpful in such a condition. That that makes sense to me. Th thank you very much for the, your your answers, and thank you very much for the the presentation on the the good paper. Um, okay, thank you, so Ryan.